Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm going to start a new playthrough series and that's all about Nemo's War by Victory Point Games here. Originally Nemo's War is a solo game at its heart and I think this is how it works best. Nevertheless, the designers came up with a cooperative variant and a semi-cooperative variant. And I'm a little bit intrigued if how this works out well. You can definitely check out Ant Lab Games. They did the, let's say, a full playthrough using the cooperative rules. But so far I was not able to see the semi-cooperative rules. And this is a system which I normally really enjoy a lot. So if I'm ever going to play this in a multiplayer fashion, I'm pretty sure I will use the semi cooperative rules. But today I will just keep it plain and simple and will focus on the solo play and I decided to go with a science motive here. Dark Mystic I also performed a playthrough of Nemo's War using the explorer motive. This is what the game suggests to start with. I played this game twice already. Not saying I will be, I won't be doing any mistakes and I'm pretty sure I will also not really play it very efficiently. Still there are a lot of dice to roll and you know how awful I am at that. But nevertheless I will focus on the science motive for today and this more or less tells you for what you get victory points for each of those warships, for those adventure cards and whatnot. But I will explain everything as I go. With the science motive I get to choose one of those upgrades here and that's the monstrous design. Gain, gain one fewer notoriety per ship token that you sink from a stalker deck only down to a minimum of zero. And that's pretty important because when you land on 26 of those notoriety points in this um, science mode if you automatically lose the game. Unfortunately nothing is free in this world so we still have to pay for the cost of this card. That's three resources that we have to spend and yeah Nemo is already something which I want to keep as high as possible because it's the let's say weakest track here. So we have way more stages for crew and the hull. So I really tempted to go with one two crew points here and one hull point at this point in time. So now I paid for my starting upgrade here which I put next or onto my Tableau. I'm not really sure if you can refer to a tableau. It would be really cool if the game would actually ship with an actual tableau, but yeah, that's all I have for now. I already created the draw deck here according to the rules using the science motive. So it really depends on which motive you're running. There's a different way to compile this draw deck here, but this is something I already did. Also, of course, chosen a random finale. I don't know what it is at this point in time. And keep in mind, this is pretty much our goal. We have to run through this draw pile here or up to the finale once we have let's say resolved the finale card we would then do the final scoring and I guess our goal should be to have at least 220 victory points it's still an inconsequential victory would be cooler to reach success or even triumph level but to be honest not reaching for the stars here for now I'm already satisfied if I make it through the draw pile to be honest of course there are a number of ways in order to lose this game. First of all I already explained this when our notoriety tracker reached this 26 we automatically lose the game. If one of our Nautilus or ship resources here reach this defeat spot we are also immediately or we have immediately lost the game. And then there is an additional rule when you can no longer place any more ships or if you're not able to place a warship somewhere on the board there is some kind of a hierarchy which you have to follow or a workflow which you have to follow and if the last point of that workflow cannot be done then you also automatically lose the game. I think this is then referred to be the imperialist victory but yeah not sure if we ever get there. Of course we are on a science mission so much like the Enterprise. Um, so not sure how often we will really engage those ships but at some point in time we really have to do that in order to get some of those salvage points in order to get some upgrades of course later on but of course we also have to keep that board at least kind of empty or clean enough to not hinder us in our various tests which we have to perform. 
You can also score victory points in really, really, really various, various ways. So we can sink warships, non-warships, we can resolve adventure cards, treasure cards, or we can do liberation, we can discover signs, we can see wonders, and we also can get some ship resources, penalty, and such like that. We can score the sea, for example, for all our characters that would be remaining, we gain some victory points. And yeah, this imperialist victory is a minus one, but as soon as the imperialist victory is going, to happen we will lose the game anyway i think this is more or less a misprint and i think the faq or so tells us to yeah ignore this little icon there the game comes with those nice yeah scoring markers here i'm not so sure if i will use them maybe i will in order to keep me some let's say idea but i think i will mainly do that off camera Every now and then I may show you where we are at this point in time. Keep in mind we still won't reach those at least 220 victory points but not sure if I will remember that but at least it gives me a glimpse of how good or bad we are doing at a particular point in time. The stage is set so I think without further ado let us get let us get started so I will explain all the rules as I go. Not sure if I will go into that detail because again there are a lot of other great playthroughs out there already yeah which do explain the rules but of course as you know me I like to talk a lot so um, yeah <laughs> I will definitely make sure you will understand this game properly. Bear with me, I will definitely do one or two rules mistake. I really try to record this video as soon as possible. Not sure if I will do that in one go, but maybe in two or only three goes because I have a lot of other interesting games coming up which I have to record anytime soon. But now, without further ado, let's grab our first adventure card here. This is, of course, a prologue card. Unfortunately, right now, there is only one of those prologue cards. It would be really cool if we would see some kind of an expansion where you get some more variety in those act one two and three cards from what i've heard from one of the representative by victory points game they may be working on something like that but yeah he was not really sharing too much and he was not doing any or making any promises at that point but things may look good but let's have a look at this act one prologue here the facts relating to this apparition entered in various log books agreed in most respects as to the shape of the object or creature in question the untiring rapidity of its movements its surprising power of locomotion and the peculiar life with which it seemed endowed if it was a whale it surpassed in size all those hitherto classified in science yeah, I think if you have read the book or if you watched the movie with Kirk Douglas, I would definitely encourage you to watch the movie or read the book. It's even better. Let's have a look what it is. Roll a die and place the Nautilus in the corresponding major ocean and then we would commence the play with the next card. Okie dokie, let's roll the die. Six it is. So we will play our nice little Nautilus here into the Indian Ocean. It's adjacent to the Cape of Good Hope and we can also sail directly to the Western Pacific area. So overall, I think that corner down there isn't that bad. Act 1 also tells us that we would rolling two white dice for ship placement, which we will do after we have resolved the next adventure card, which we will do right away. So let's see what we get. And here we have Captain Nemo's Thunderbolt. When the first islander laid hands on the companionway railing, he was flung backward by some invisible power. Lord knows what. He ran off, howling in terror and wildly prancing around. Okay, that's a test. We can use two resources, so Nemo resources or Hull resources, so we can wager those in order to bet on this test. It's only an eight, so it's not overly bad or it's not that difficult to achieve. If you would pass, we could keep this card. Unfortunately, right now that's zero victory point. No, it's not for us. It's a plus one here, so for each adventure card we get, normally it's zero, but as we get a plus one, this card is worth one victory point out of 220. Hooray! But of course, first we would have to pass this test. If we would fail, we would gain two notoriety in comparison to only one, and we would lose one hull. Okay, yeah, I think I will wager one resource and I think I will go for Nemo here. The way how this works is so we bet on Nemo's yeah, 
leadership skills or whatnot. So we would move it in between. If you would pass the test, we would get it right back. If you would, let's say, fail the test, we would lose one or up to two resources of the resources we wagered pretty much. We really want to make sure to get it done. We could still, let's say, wager an additional resource because we can also go for the hull here. This would give us a plus two. But if we would then roll snake eyes, we would lose pretty much two resources in total. And huh, I need to roll a six. No, why not? Let's do it plus four in total. That's our die roll modifier, more or less. So we now roll two dice and we are looking at at least four or four, which it's not that difficult to achieve with two d6s. But of course, keep in mind a natural, let's say, or snake eyes already result in that. That's a nine, perfectly fine. Plus four, that's 13. We only needed an eight, so we are perfectly fine. So first of all, we get our resources back. According to the pass effect, we still gain one notoriety because we're using some very, I don't know, cool technology here which scares the people off. So our notoriety goes up, but we are still allowed to draw one treasure from this nice little treasure bag here. Okay, let's see what we get. And here we found a treasure which is worth three victory point normally, but I just checked it's not worth any additional points for us. For the explorer, I think that's a plus one, but still we would keep this token here. We would put it up there to the collected treasures, which isn't that bad. I can still use those treasures in order to uh, modify my die rolls later on. So this is definitely cool for some of the tests, not all of them, but some of the tests. And yeah, this is pretty much how you resolve a test. And last but not least, we would put this card into the pass section. So everything that's in our pass section, we would get to trigger at the end of the game for the scoring. Keep in mind right now that's zero point, but because we have the science motive, it's worth one victory point for us. So overall, not too bad. Okay, that was the event phase where we revealed the top cards. In this case, it was two cards because we had the prologue card on top of that. Next we would go into the placement phase. Remember I showed you those two white dice. So we would now roll those two dice and check how much actions we get and where new ship tokens are getting placed. In this case, wow, this is a double pretty much. So we will see a lull turn in this case. So we don't get any additional action points because what you do, you would subtract the lower die from the higher die. In this case, that's zero. So we are not getting any additional action points. And this also results in a so-called lull turn. Of course, we would still add two unknown ship tokens here to the South Atlantic. So that's the four. This is what we wrote right now. That's not a problem here at all. In theory, we would also place an additional gem onto um, this space here. But right now there is only one. I think it's called treasure available crystal here. But we are allowed to place one, uh, let's say, treasure available stone on top of this adventure deck here. And this is pretty cool because we start the game with one action point because we are playing on the, let's say, normal difficulty level. I think there's the captain difficulty level where you start with zero points and then there is, oof, not sure what the easy mode is, but then you would start with two. Right now we are playing on this medium level, normal level. So we are starting with one point and during a lull turn, the adventure step, so draw an adventure card only costs us one action point written here cost one on a lull turn and as we do have a lull turn I think uh, that's what I want to do because there are two of those gemstones on top of that card so this can really help us. So let's spend our one and only action point. In theory we are allowed to keep those stones but of course we have to take the card because we don't have to resolve that card. If that's an awfully bad card we can just put it back and put the let's say those gems back on top of it but Let's wait and see. And here we have a lost time. It's a play card. We had run aground at full tide, an inconvenient state of affairs for floating the Nautilus off. 
but although it could neither sink nor split open, it was in serious danger of being permanently attached to these reefs, and that would have been the finish of Captain Nemo's submersible. Reduce the number of Nautilus upgrade cards available for purchase by one of your choice from among these available. Discard it is out of play for the rest of this game, and we would place this card into our fail pile, but it doesn't provide any negative points or whatsoever, it's just a mean effect. And this is now a tough one to be honest. All of them are great. This can help me reduce my notoriety, which I really may need. The strength and prow is cool, gives me plus one DRM, but as I will, let's say, attack anyway with a stalk attack normally, I may get rid of it. This hydrave is also really important. And yeah, let's get rid of the strength and prow for now. Unfortunately, we cannot use it. It's really out of the game, cannot come back. But this means we have dealt with this card, so we are allowed to keep both of those uh, gemstones here. And for each of those stones, we are now be able to draw one of those treasure tokens out of the bag. So that's nice. So let's draw the first one. We do them really one by one. That's important. Oof, that's a zero. And for us, it's really a zero. Okay, that's a pity. Let's draw a second token. What do we have? Okay, that's much better. That's three additional victory points. Okay, but as we are basically out of actions, we can jump directly into the next round. So let's draw our event card. And here we see a novel proposal. The first thing I noticed was a range of mountains about 2000 feet high, the shapes of which were most capricious. I knew that we were nearing the island of Ceylon, the pearl which hangs from the lobe of the Indian Peninsula. It's another test. We can only wager half for that. And yeah, we can, if you pass, we would reveal one additional Nautilus upgrade, which is now available for purchase. And for us, this adventure card is worth one victory point. And I think I want to wager the half point. Yeah, let's do that. But now it means we really have to roll a seven because this only gives us a plus two in total. We still have some jokers in our back pocket here, which gives us a DRM or die roll modifier after the roll. But I really would rather not spending those too soon. And if we don't flip them, because we have to sacrifice those guys here, if we don't flip them, they still provide us the victory points that are printed on those cards. And this is definitely something that you shouldn't ignore at all. But for now, let's roll those dice. We are looking for a seven or more. That's a nine. Perfect. That's absolutely good enough. We wouldn't even have to wager any resources from our ship. So we get our resource back. We can keep the card, which is worth one victory point for us. And we would reveal an additional Nautilus upgrade card. The periscope device, you no longer plus one between consecutive bold attacks. Also, you can now make consecutive stalk attacks if successful. Wow, that's also very, very nice. Hmm, nice, nice stuff. Okay, let's do the placement phase. Oh, wow, another lull turn. Oh, this really hurts because now we are really out of action points. This is bad, but of course we still have to place those. So one ship goes to the five and the next one has to go adjacent. So that's either here or there. Oof, in this case, I really don't know. Let's just put it, no, let's put it down there course we can still take care of it. Those lines here are only adjacent for the place and we cannot move along them. That's really important. As we are in a lull turn, I get to place one of those gemstones on top of the adventure deck and now I'm really out of action points. So now I could really consider sacrificing my second officer because this would give me at least one action to be honest and there is no let's say bad effect on the other side because uh, two lull turns in a row is really really weak so yeah let's go for this so let's sacrifice the second officer 
to gain one action, but I think I will spam that action right away to go adventuring again. So potentially I can keep this token. So let's see what we get. And wow, that's a mean one. Attack of the giant squid. Just as we were crowding each other to reach the platform, two more arms lashed the air, swooped on the seaman stationed in front of Captain Nemo and carried the fellow away with irresistible violence. It's a test of 10, but we can use crew and hull for this test. And I think this is what I will wager. So that's plus three, plus two in total. That's die roll modifier of plus five. And we need to roll a five in order to pass this test. And wow, we really get a lot of stuff to be honest. So let's see, that's seven, awesome. Absolutely good enough. First of all, we are allowed to keep this card. It's a wonder and wonders are worth basically four times the value that's printed on that. So right now that's four victory points for this card alone because we can keep it. But then we also get to draw two treasure stones. And because we were adventuring, we get basically a third treasure, not stone, a third treasure draw from the back. So in total, that was really, really huge. So let's do that one after one. So let's see, that's the first one. Okay, that's another three points. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What do we have here? Here we have a retainer pretty much. So we can spend this token for one action or we can keep it until the end, then it would be worth two victory points. So this can be great to be honest. So it's either victory points or an additional action, but we still get a third draw for now. And here we have another retainer. Wow, X to gain a reroll or keep for four victory points. Wow, that was really an outstanding adventure to be honest. So let's put this card into our pass pile here. Then we jump directly into the next round because we are out of actions again. And here we have Agri Somnia. The Nautilus floated in the midst of a phosphorescent bat, which became quite dazzling. It was produced by myriads of luminous aniculae whose brilliancy was increased as they glided over the metallic hull of the vessel. Okay, we could now lose one Nemo or one character to P. Overall, that's wow, six points, nine points in total because six times those science points for our science motive here. That's definitely something. And yeah, three points for this one, but then we would lose one Nemo. Otherwise, immediately lose one action if you currently have any and fail. Ah, no, I think in this case, Let's lose one Nemo for now. This is also, let's say, giving or reducing our victory points by four at the end of the game, because if we would end up the game on this position, those two eyes are worth eight victory points for us. So keep that in mind. But there are ways to regain those points anyway. But what's more important, I'm now allowed to keep this card. And overall, that's really a lot of victory points. Awesome. Okay, let's roll for placement. That's at least kind of better. So it's one action point we get. So two minus one, that's one action point. But of course we still have to place ships. And I believe you always start at the lowest spot or take the lowest die here. So we we'll place one of those ships into the Western Pacific and another one will go to the Eastern Pacific. We are not placing any of those gemstones here because it wasn't a lull turn. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not sure what this stone is. Ah, this was the stone I was drawing. So let's remove it. And I think then it's time to take some actions. We only have one action point. It's really kind of a bummer. So I could now either move somewhere, but right now I'm feeling perfectly fine here. I could go for this treasure gemstone here. So I could do a search action or I could do an attack action here and really search for one of those ships. Right now I'm still on a science mission and I'm feeling perfectly fine. So I really want to use those gemstones. So I will go for a search action now and for a search action I can pretty much exert any one ship resource at this point. In time. I don't have the arcane library. For it's in basically a Nautilus upgrade. I don't have that. I would gain a minus one per real ship token. Right now there aren't any revealed ships at the Indian Ocean. They're all still those yeah, hidden tokens here. And yeah, I would 
definitely have to come at least to a seven in order to get a green result here. So that's really, really important. I think for this search here, I will send my crew. Come on, guys. I know there's tre there are treasures down there. So I get a die roll modifier of plus three in this case. I could now also spend those diamonds here, for example. This would increase my die roll modifier by three, but I would also lose three victory points. So right now, I think that should still be okay. So I need to roll it at least a four, which should be somewhat possible. And I really love how all the rules and tables are printed here on this game board. In most cases, you really don't have to refer to the rule books. One, rule book one, you really yeah, went through that. that. That's really, really great. So let's roll those dice. That's a five. Wow, barely enough. Five plus three is eight. So we are here in the suspected. It's a green result. So we passed this test, which is really great. We would collect one treasure, which is cool, but our notoriety goes up. So someone has seen our crew or something like that. And yeah, the suspicious suspicion level basically went up by one point here. And yeah, keep in mind, we don't want to reach 26 points here. This is really something we have to be careful about. But we are still allowed to draw one of those treasure tokens right now. So let's see what we get. That's another retainer. We can discard it for one action or we would also keep it for two gemstones. Okay, that's really nice. Of course, we get our crew back. I could now spend those retainers to gain an additional action, but I think right now I want to hold on to those. I'm pretty uh, doing pretty okay. But of course, as we were allowed to draw one treasure token, we have to get rid of this gemstone here. So I can no longer do a search action here until it gets replenished apparently. Okay, next round, let's see what we get. The iceberg, everything was frozen, even the noise. The Nautilus was then obliged to stop in its adventurous course amid these fields of ice. In spite of our efforts, the Nautilus remained immovable. It's a test of nine, we can wager Nemo, so he will lead the way, and we can also wager our hull. If we pass, we would gain this card. That's again, six points for us. Ah, we really have to pass that. And we gain two additional action points to spend this turn only. Even if this exceeds the action point, maximum of five. Wow, that's awesome. We really have to get this card. That's for sure. We have to pass it. So I better spend Nemo and the Hull. In total, that's a die roll modifier of plus four. I still need to roll a five. How comfortable do I feel with the odds? Yeah. I think let's go for it because I still had one of those returner to gain a reroll. So yeah, let's go for it. We need a five. <laughs> barely, barely we were avoiding this iceberg, but this is really great. So we get those six science points because our motive multiplies it by six, which is really, really huge. And we also get one, two additional actions for this round only. This is really important and you can not carry over more than one action point to the next round. This is also important to remember. Yeah, and overall, these are six points, as I already mentioned. Awesome. Okay, let's roll for placement. Okay, that's much better. In total, those are three additional actions. So we can really do stuff this round. But of course, we still have to place ship. Let's start with the two here. And then we have the five. I think I want to go after some ships anyway. So let's place this ship from up there. It cannot be placed there down here into the Indian Ocean where we currently are. And I think with our first action, we want to do a stalk attack against this hidden ship here. It gets a plus one die roll modifier and we can only do one attack with that unless we get the periscope device, but right now I don't have it. So let's replace this token here with an actual ship token out of this huge bag here. Right now, the majority of those are non-warships. There are some yellow warships in there. So let's see what we get. And here we just found the Agamemnon, a British freighter with a defense value of eight. It's not a warship, so it doesn't have any attack points here. It's worth two victory points, but not for us because we have a minus one of those tokens here. So overall, that's really great. 
we would gain one notoriety but because of our monstrous design we get one fewer notoriety so we more look like uh, let's say a monster a sea monster than an actual ship so people are not getting that suspicious the way how this works is we jump directly into phase number two the nautilus attack because yeah it's not a warship apparently this is our yeah hit point pretty much will reach need to roll eight points we can spend any one resource from the nautilus so i think once more we will send our crew into battle that's a plus three we get a plus one anyway because of this stalk attack here so in total our die roll modifier is a four we need to roll a four because the defense value is an eight so let's see what we get and yeah that's good enough six plus four in total that's ten more than enough to take down the Agamemnon. We are not getting any notoriety, which is really important. And now we get to make a choice if we want to keep this ship here as actual tonnage. So we gain the victory points and we could gain some more victory points. If we get the full column full of ships here, so all the oceans pretty much, we would gain eight additional victory points scouring the seas. But right now this is only worth one victory point and I really need to get some upgrades. So I would rather put it into my salvage area up there. We can hold up to four here. And yeah, these are pretty much give me cost in order to buy those upgrade cards later on. Right now that's definitely not enough. As of two or three of those ships, I will be able to actually do something with it. I think I want to be next to one of those gemstones for now. So I will spend one, two action points to move two times adjacent. It leaves me with two more action points. And I think I will spend another action point, bringing me down to one to stalk attack the next ship here. So let's replace it once more. We already know the drill here. And, and again, we would get another non-warship. Good thing is this is a slaver. So we would gain one additional crew. Awesome, awesome. It's zero victory points. So we definitely keep it for the salvage area. It only has a seven. So we get a plus one anyway. And our crew is really, really eager to free those slaves. So we we'll totally bet with those guys. So that's plus three because we're doing a stalk attack. Again, we get a plus one. So in total, that's plus four. Our target is a seven. So we need to roll at least a three. Yeah, that's definitely good enough. We put this Joomla here into our salvage area, but we gain one additional crew for that. Awesome. First of all, we get our wagered crew back and then we get one more. So our crew is fresh. And if we would end the game at this rate, we would gain eight additional victory points for that status. Not too bad. We still have one more action left, but I think I want to hold on to this action point in case we are getting another lull turn. So we will be able to do stuff with it. So jump right into the next round. And here we have the transatlantic cable. We were about 500 miles from heart's content at a depth of more than 1,400 fathoms that I saw the electric cable lying on the bottom. This is now a keep card. When the Nautilus is in the North Atlantic, you may fail and immediately perform free insight and or search actions, but no more than three combined. For each one, you gain plus one notoriety. If we don't use this card here, though, we would put it into our pass pile. And then for us, that's worth three more potential victory points. And right now, I really don't want to have those um, notoriety points, to be honest. I can keep it, so whenever I need the action there, for example, I could still go for it, but if I'm not using it, it's still worth three victory points for us. Let's roll for the placement. Okay, it's not a lull turn. Again, we would see two more actions. Then we would place one ship here and one ship there. Those are exactly the two regions where we just removed one. So overall, I think it was a good idea to yeah, clean up a little bit over there. We have three more reactions and we have two salvage tokens. So in theory, I could go for the fog machine here, which only costs us two, but I think there are more powerful cards out there. So I think for now, I will not upgrade the Nautilus. I would rather search for stuff here because there's another gemstone available. So let's go for that. 
again I will use my now fresh crew to get a plus three here and again I definitely need to roll at least uh, four in order to get a green result for the search so let's see what we get that's a six plus three that's nine awesome that's normal success so we don't get any additional notoriety which is good and we are still allowed to collect one treasure nice so let's see what we get here okay and okay this is something we have to play right away it's x and draw two treasure tokens for that awesome i will definitely take that so here is the first one but there are also some bad results in there so keep that in mind but that's definitely not a bad result that's five more victory points for us okay that's the first one i take that and here we have two more so in total this was worth seven victory points great i still have two more action points i will spend one that's for sure and i will go for one of those ships again using a stalk attack here so let's draw a ship counter let's see what we get oh man the fujiyama that's our first warship a frigate this is now a pity it's not worth any victory points that's already a downer it has a relatively low attack value which is good but a relatively high defense value and the bad thing is those ships fire first there is a technology out there which could help us in reverse that but right now they will definitely hit us i cannot spend any of my ship resource or wager of my ship resource in order to modify that result which is really a pity but i can still use for example um, something like Ned land here for plus one drm and, and whatnot but let's see how good or bad those guys are shooting and by the way because i was using a stalk attack i could now also decide to not attack those guys but i think i'm feeling comfortable i want to have that ship as a ton as a salvage so i'm looking for a six or more now oh man that's a five that's not enough should i go for a re-roll or should i spend and one of my guys i think not because the lowest die result now determines how bad i'm going to get hit and right now that's only one so in this case i only get one damage point i think overall that's something that can be tolerated but of course it's a random hit so let's roll the die again that's a two which means our crew gets hit so those guys we just freed yeah your cannon fodder or whatnot but now it's our turn to fight back and now we can spend a resource and as our crew still has a plus three i think i want to do that so that's plus three we still get our plus one so in total that's a plus four we need to roll a five i think let's go for it yeah let's go for it we will not spend any gems at this point in time no that's a four are you kidding me this is now really really bad we would now lose one our one crew point and yeah this test would not have been successful but i think i think i think i think i think i want to spend my retainer here to gain a re-roll here it's four victory points which we are losing but right now i don't feel like losing too many resources so let's roll those dice again and i have to roll both dice again yeah that's definitely good enough so i'm allowed to keep that ship i'm not getting any notoriety whatsoever but i get to keep this ship as salvage so now i have three salvage points i'm down to only one action point and unfortunately the refit action cost us two from which i can remember yeah that's the case so i think i will call it a round for now i want to keep my one and only action point in case again we are facing a lull turn and here is our next event shakedown maneuvers round the nautilus the sea dashed furiously this is a bad sea remark ned land detestable indeed and one that does not suit a boat like the nautilus it's another test of 10 we can wage a crew and the hull and if we would pass we would gain two ship resources or and or two actions we can mix and match so one each for example and this is worth six victory points and wow we really have to pass the test so i will definitely wager both of those resources here so that's crew and hull for a die roll modifier of five i could still 
band jams in order to get a seven and this is really great so i think i will do that so i will spend this resource here this gives me an additional plus two of course i will lose an additional two victory points for that but in total i have now a die roll modifier of seven but this card is really great so i need a three or more yeah definitely good enough so i can keep this card i get a hell of a lot of victory points for that and i get up to two ship roses and or two actions this round let me quickly think about it and indeed i think i will get one action and one resource so let me take my crew back because otherwise we can rest no let me get a nemo back because it's worth four more victory points but this is also four more victory points but getting nemo back is, is definitely harder than to refresh our crew we already gained our action point and then we would jump into the oh wow that's four more points wow that's great and yeah we can keep that because even if it would exceed our maximum point limit for the limit for this round that's great so we get one two three four more action points but only for this round so everything that's above it will be lost but of course we can only save one action point anyway but of course we still need to add new ship counters one goes to one one goes to five this is full it can go here or there no it can only go there so we have to place it onto this sea region there and i think this will be our next target so yeah let's spend it to move up there let's spend an additional point in order to search for this treasure here i will rager with a crew this gives me a plus three yep let's see what we get that's seven plus three that's ten another success so we get to draw an additional treasure token awesome what did we get x and draw two more treasure tokens awesome so first one ah wow this is a wonder the city of Pavloperti. that's worth four victory points for us that's nice and we get one more and wow another one the deep sea winds well in total those were eight victory points for us really really nice let's spend an additional point in order to attack this ship with a stalk stalk attack here so let's see what ship two can we get okay here we see another non-warship the gangi a whaler oh we could gain one treasure awesome again it will not fire back we will wager with our crew again in total that's a plus four we need to roll a four so let's see what we get that's an eight perfectly fine so we can now choose we're not getting any notoriety because of our monstrous design but we get to draw a treasure token what did we get here retainer x to gain one hull or keep for three awesome those are really really great i will totally keep those and i think i want to keep this ship up there two for a salvage and i still have three more actions so i think i will go for a refit action now this costs us one two action points because we are not in a lull turn again i will wager my crew for a plus three here oh. Okay, wow, 11, awesome. Brilliance, gain one upgrade for one fewer salvage. Wow, that's so awesome. Those guys really know how to treat my baby, the Nautilus here. So I think I will go for the hydro drive because this moves me or moves the Nautilus up to two spaces. I only need to spend two of those. We will just get rid of them. That's perfect because our crew is just brilliant. So we now can keep this hydro drive here awesome and if i did the counting correctly our next card should be act two already so i think i will call it a day for now we still have one more action left for the next round i really hope i haven't made too many mistakes if so please make me aware please give me your suggestions of what i should be doing in order to optimize my victory points but yeah overall i really enjoy this game really looking forward to part two of this so look out for that and yeah until then bye bye